hard to believe it's been seven months since I first set this tank up. Let's take a closer look and see how the plants and the fish are doing and we'll talk about how well this new filter system is working. So starting with the plants, you can see how much th these have grown just in the past seven months. Tremendous amount of growth. And of course the pothos is the dominant feature here and it's really starting to put on some big leaves, some thicker stems, now, now that the roots are well entrenched into the substrate. And the golden goddess philodendron has been doing really well, especially this one in the back. It's already up to the glass. I may have to raise this shelf a little bit. And the other cutting is coming along. It's growing slower, but it's still looking great. I did add a second uh, tree branch to the, to the background to give the vines something else to climb on, but also just to add some visual interest. The purple waffle plant is really growing some large leaves, and we've got one little flower showing up there, and lots of smaller leaves underneath as well. The parlor palm is kind of getting swallowed up back here. It's really struggling to compete with all the pothos especially, but it's still sending out some new growth. The money tree has not done as well as I had hoped. The, uh, the leaves are showing signs of chlorosis, which is a lack of iron and possibly just a lack of nitrates, nitrogen in general. I have been dosing a good bit of fertilizer, uh, liquid fertilizer into this setup. It just hasn't been enough for the money tree. And the roots of the money tree just haven't made their way down to the, the substrate yet. They're only about to this point right here. So they're just having a hard time getting enough nutrients out of the water. And if you remember uh, in the build video of this uh, setup, the money tree at that time had several healthy leaves on it and it looked great. And that was all grown in a tank out in the greenhouse, uh, the stock tank, I believe. And those roots had, had reached the bottom. It was pulling up plenty of nutrients. So um, I think once these roots can get down to the bottom, they're going to be fine. But we do have, you know, a new leaf coming out. So that's a good sign. That's kind of how the money tree works. Like when, when they're kind of struggling to get through to the substrate, they're still going to send out new growth. They're still alive. They're still hanging on. But uh, they, they really need those roots to get down there where all the nutrients are. So what I may end up doing is taking the money tree and putting it in a smaller tank, a more shallow tank. That way the roots don't have to work so hard to get down to the substrate. So that would be another experiment I could set up to see how well it does there. The syngonium is way back here. It's, it's not doing as well as the pothos. It's just not competing very well. And that's, that's kind of typical for syngonium, at least for me. I know a lot of you have said that syngonium just grows like crazy for you in a, in a setup like this. But um, and it's, it does okay for me. It just doesn't it doesn't grow as, as quickly as pothos does. And the maranta that I had back here pretty much died back on the top. However, there is a new leaf. I'm not sure if you can see it. There's a new leaf that has sprouted in the water and it's, and it's pushing up against the top of the lid. Can't really see it that well, but um, I've got another maranta cutting right here that's doing better. And I, I wonder if the maranta in the back corner was just getting too much light because this is shaded and it seems to be doing better. I ended up putting the Higer Aquarium light up here and it, it was over above above this tank for a while and then I decided to move it because I wanted I wanted to set the 24-hour cycle on this setup in particular so I get a, a sunrise in the morning it gets to peak intensity and then um, turns off in the late afternoon and then we get the the night light or the moonlight which is blue shining for a few hours at night now this tradescantia or wandering jew wandering dude whatever it's called now it's actually from growing from this uh this betta jar right here and it's really doing very well it's starting to grow over onto this set up and I'm actually thinking about taking some cuttings from the jar over here and putting them in certain areas because I think that purple would really help add some interest 
to the, to the background here. And of course, I've got so many plants all crammed up here, and I'm talking about adding more, which is kind of crazy. But that Tradescantia is going to is going to grow pretty tall. It's going to be similar to the Pothos in the fact that it's vining, and it's always going to be growing pretty quickly. So going down to water level, we're going to see how the fish are doing. The, the neons are just loving this setup. I mean, they just seem to be so vibrant, so lively. And um, I've added a few more guppies. Uh, it's a pair of neon blue guppies. And the female looks like she's pregnant. I, I need to pull her out, put her somewhere where I can, I can, uh, where we can safely get the, the fry separated because I, I think these tetras would tear up that fry. I've also added some albino cories. We've got three in here. And they're just constantly going along the bottom, going along the, the branches and the roots, just sifting through, this, but especially along the substrate. You know, you can see the, the leaves have pretty much fully disintegrated, and uh, there's a nice mulm layer covering the, the sand on the bottom. And so they're just constantly sifting through that, and it's helping to mix it into the sand a little bit. We can see certain areas where this organic matter from the leaves is starting to mix in with the sand and eventually it'll make its way down into the substrate. But I haven't added any more leaves since the last video and uh, so I'm going to add a few more magnolia leaves today. They're dry so they're not going to sink right away. Magnolia seed pods are still doing well. Got snails on it. Here's the other one here. And there are a good many pond snails all throughout this tank, which I am perfectly fine with. They're breaking down the leaves, breaking down the organic matter, which is going to add value to the substrate. So as far as maintenance goes, I mean, I, I haven't done any water changes since setting this tank up, and I haven't scraped the glass or anything. I see over in this corner diatomaceous algae building up. I have to scrape that off. But <clears throat> other than taking some dead leaves from the top riparian section and training some of the vines along the, the branches. I really haven't done any maintenance. So once we get to the one year anniversary of this setup, I'm going to do a video talking about the comparison between a plenum anoxic filter and having a dirt substrate. Because the 10 gallon setup that I had these neons in prior to this was a dirt substrate and it was very easy, very low maintenance, but so is this setup. So I think it would be interesting to, to compare the two on a video. I think it would be helpful for a lot of you because that is a big question when we're setting up our tanks is what kind of substrate, what kind of filtration should I have? So hopefully that will shed some light on kind of what I've experienced with um, with the 10 gallon black water setup and then this one as well and speaking of black water i don't think i can call this a black water setup anymore because there's just no tannins that are building up in the water and i think a lot of that is just having to do with the amount of, of kitty litter of baked clay which is which is mixed into the substrate i think um, you know the water that's slowly going down into the plenum and then circulating back up i think it, it it's all that water's passing over the kitty litter i think the kitty litter is absorbing uh, or neutralizing the tannins so with the amount of of leaves that i put in here and botanicals but also rooibos tea the water should be pretty dark i mean i, I probably used a whole box several packets like 15 packets or so of rooibos tea since setting this up and I'm just not getting really any, any tannin color to the water. But that's okay. It's just part of the learning process. And I, I'm enjoying this tank perfectly well without all the buildup of tannins. It's still very beautiful. And uh, even though it's not technically a black water. I really wanted to show you all the roots that are just growing all throughout the substrate. It's really been amazing to watch uh, how quickly the plants started growing, especially once the roots tapped into the substrate. It's one thing I talk a lot about on my videos, and it's just amazing. It's still amazing for me just to see it happen time and time again. I mean, once once the 
pothos roots especially hit that substrate, you can start seeing larger leaves, thicker stems, more uh, vibrant growth, and the same with the philodendron back there. And once, the, once those roots started growing into that sand and down into the gravel and getting into that nutrient layer, uh, the growth just really took a noticeable turn. I've got a few ladybugs that are gracing us with their presence and and I'm okay with that I think I, I do have some concerns about you know ladybugs falling into the water but it doesn't seem to be a, a problem so far and you know with the ladybugs on the plants I have less to worry about as far as pests you know aphids mealy bugs things like that now since I added the guppies from the greenhouse I have noticed some new fry swimming around uh, but just in the past few weeks, I've, I'm only seeing one fry now. I think the rest have been eaten, <laughs> uh, probably by the neons. You can see in the corner that, that huge root. I think that's coming from the philodendron in the back. But you can see it's just growing all over the place and then eventually tapping into the substrate. And I haven't pruned any of the roots. I know I talked about that in the last video but um, I just I haven't really touched them. I don't think I need to at this point. There's still plenty of room for all the fish. You know, the, uh, all the roots provide extra cover for when the fish get, get uh, frightened by anything. Adds to the quality of their environment, I believe. After having this set up for seven months and just seeing how, how great it's performed, I really want an even larger setup. Uh, I know that's what I said when I moved all these neons from the 10 gallon over here. You know, the problem with the 10 gallon was just, it wasn't large enough. And so this has been great, but it just definitely inspires me to go even larger. So at some point I want to set up like a, you know, another 75 gallon or a 40 breeder. Maybe, maybe that's better. A 40 breeder, um, you know, as a, as a riparian style tank like this, I think that'd be really cool. And then I could have more variety of tetras in there and it still have plenty of space for everybody. The submerged plants haven't really done very much. They're just not getting enough light, I don't think. All these lights that are on now, uh, lighting up the tank, I do not keep them on very often. And so most of what the Amazon sword and the dwarf sag is getting is just ambient light, which is enough to keep them alive and keep them healthy, reasonably healthy. but. They're not going to be growing as well as if they had more light. Looks like we've got a detritus worm right up here eating some of the debris off the glass. Let's see if I can knock it down in there, get the fish to eat it. So yeah, that's the first detritus worm I've seen in here. And that's actually a good sign, I think, because that is a potential food source for all these fish. So I'm sure that there are more down in the substrate and all throughout the tank. But yeah, whenever I do set up a larger tank like this, I think before I start adding fish, I want to add a variety of different snails and maybe some black worms, make sure there's detritus worms, a good population of those built up in, in the substrate. That would add to the ecosystem and uh, give, a, give a food source kind of built into the tank. I'm going to add a few more magnolia leaves and just sit back, drink some coffee, and enjoy this tank. Learning to be still and just watch and enjoy my tanks has been a learning process, almost a meditative discipline. My tendency is to be critical. Oh, this is a problem. Uh, that needs to be changed. Why is this plant not growing like I want it to? And this criticism creates stress and detracts from the experience. So I have had to learn, and I'm still learning, to quiet that critical voice, be in the present moment, and enjoy what is happening now. There is a place and a time for constructive criticism, which can help me learn and improve, but there's also a place for stillness of mind, letting go of the need to be productive, the need for control and efficiency, and find the beauty in this moment. This helps to train my mind to not be so critical all the time, but to also recognize what is working, what I do enjoy and appreciate, 
and to celebrate the natural processes which are developing this tank over time. And this is yet another life lesson that our tanks can teach us. They can be a catalyst for beauty, growth, and learning, and enjoyment. If we listen closely, we can hear the lessons our tanks are teaching us and the stories that they are telling us.